And so our story begins in verse 5 of Luke chapter 1. During the reign of King Herod the Great over Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah who served in the temple as part of the priestly order of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also from a family of priests, being a direct descendant of Aaron. They were both lovers of God, living virtuously and following the commandments of the Lord fully. But they were childless since Elizabeth was barren and now they were both quite old. But one day, while Zachariah's priestly order was on duty and he was serving as priest, it happened by the casting of lots, according to the custom of the priesthood, that the honor fell upon Zachariah to enter into the holy place and burn incense before the Lord. Now these opening couple of verses are normally the sort of information that I would usually happily skip over. They're the boring info bits that you need to get through in order to get to the exciting part of the story. But when I learn scripture, it forces me to think more deeply on each and every sentence. And it makes me realize more and more how often the seemingly inconsequential sentences carry some deeper truth or importance that at first glance can be so easily missed. So as I learned this passage, this is what struck me. There, right there at the beginning of the story of Jesus, the story of God's redemption of the world is an arrow that points right back to history, to the story of the priesthood, which is almost as old as the story of Israel itself. The priests were the ones who were commissioned to be the bridge between God and his people, the ones who were given the job to, and, and the authority to worship him to serve him, to offer sacrifices on behalf of the people for their failings and to bless them. And the temple was the place where God's presence rested. It was the center of worship. And right there at the beginning of the story of Jesus, the first humans to whom God reveals his imminently unfolding plan are a man and woman saturated for generations in the priesthood and intimately involved in the temple and the sacrificial system. And it makes me realize that this story that many of us think we know so well has become so familiar through its yearly Christmas retellings that it can take on the feel of a well-loved Disney movie. But when I take time to stop and dwell in it for a while, I discover it's so much richer, so much deeper than I assumed it was, not least because I am reminded that it is rooted and embedded into the history of a nation, a tribe, and a family. And I encourage you and I to remember this as we read and engage with the stories around Jesus' birth. I wonder what greater depths we would discover if we learned to tie the New Testament more fully back to its ancient past and how that would impact our understanding of the enormity of what it means in the present. So just one small example is this tiny phrase, Elizabeth was barren. It kept niggling at me and I couldn't think why until one day it dawned on me that this is not the first time in the history of Israel that a barren woman has played a key role in God's unfolding plan. Look back into Genesis and you'll find it for yourself in the story of Abraham and Sarah. And that makes me ask myself, would a deeper understanding of Abraham and Sarah's story help me understand Elizabeth and Zachariah's story better? Would something new emerge that I hadn't understood before? And my prayer is that I, we, you, would dig deeper into God's word and find the life that is embedded there. Amen. <laughs>